Welcome to this e-learning video, in this tutorial we will be learning about the operation of air compressors. The system compressors are located in the second floor near fresh water generator the of the engine room. The main air compressors are installed for delivery of compressed air to two main air receivers and one auxiliary air receiver. The main air receivers have a capacity of 8.0 cubic meters each 30 bars while the auxiliary receiver has a capacity of 0.25 cubic meters with 30 bars. The main air is delivered to the following consumers. Main engine starting system. Auxiliary engine starting system. Supplementary air for working and control air system and the MDO flush pumps. Now let's look into the air compressors. These are air cooled and provided with an unloading gear, a safety valve after compression stage and a non-return valve on each compressor discharge. Each vessel is provided with a safety valve set 10% above the operating pressure. Assuming that the compressor and receiver has been thoroughly secured, the first step is to open the inlet and outlet cooling water valves to ensure that sufficient cooling arrangements is carried out. Before starting the compressor, open the high pressure outlet of the compressor, then in the air receivers, this may vary what air receiver will you be using, open the main air receiver inlet manual valve. To ensure that is no contaminants in the tank, open the drain valve located at the bottom of the tank. When everything is ready, before starting the compressor ensure that there are no trip indications, if there are, reset it before starting the compressor. Now check the pressure and temperature deviations of the compressor, if any abnormalities are found, rectify it immediately. Then check the cooling water temperatures, of the compressor ensure that it is below 60 degrees Celsius. Remember the valve that we opened earlier, we have to close that to charge now the air receivers. Before closing, examine that there are no contaminations in the system. Then let's go monitor the charging pressure of the air receiver if it's really filling up. If it's steadily charging, let's go back to the compressor and switch it to remote operation. The compressors will automatically stop when it reaches 30 bars and starts based on the priority setting of the logic controllers. When everything is set, we check again the pressures if it's fully filled up. The filling lines of the compressed are interconnected, and can fill two air bottles simultaneously, even the three compressors can do so as long as the power requirements adhere to its capacity. Always remember to check the pressure and drain contaminants from time to time. Now let's check the auxiliary air tank, this is connected to the same filling line both for the main air receivers, so you can fill it with the same operation. Open this valve to fill the air tank from the common line, these valves are non-return valves. Same as the other air tanks, check pressures and contamination. When everything is set, we will now line up the service air system even though we have an independent service air compressor, this is required since it's connected to the air dryers. Open both main air outlet valves from the receivers. Then open the auxiliary air crossover valve, this interconnects the main air to the main air receiver. Open the valve before the reduction valve, then the valve after, it is now reduced from 30 bars to 7 bars ready for the air dryer. Now let's line up the required valve arrangements for the service air system, this is just a redundancy system since we have an independent service air compressor where we will operate later. The air is reduced from 30 bars to 7 bars. The system can be interconnected with the use of a crossover valve, when maintenance is required we can still supply a 7 bars output. Now let's discuss about setting up the air dryer, the air dryer is being used to supply a moisture free system used for pneumatics and automation. The air dryer shall supply the following system arrangement. Purifiers, bilge separator, boilers, auxiliary engines, main engine and other control air consumers. 
To operate the air dryer, we have to open the inlet and outlet valves, then always check the pressure differences. This is to ensure when maintenance is being required, a bypass also is included in the system. Now let's line up the main and auxiliary air system. The auxiliary engines or the diesel generators are connected to the auxiliary air receiver. Open these valves to ensure the readiness of the generators. We are almost ready, let's line up the main air system to the main engine, we can use both valves in the operation but we will be opening one valve in this procedure. Now the last operation, the service air compressor is critical to the operation of any engine room. Open the inlet of the receiver, this is coming from the air compressor. Then drain the contaminants of the receiver. Then start the compressor and set to remote operation. Open the outlet valve of the receiver to give supply to the consumers such as the hydrofor tanks, water mist, incinerators, and other machinery requiring service air. We have now completely checked the compressed air system and always remember to drain the air bottles, check required norms of pressure and temperatures.